If you want to find a gym that's going to get you the best results, keep you consistent, and get you the most fit, you have to consider the following three things. By the way, number three is the most important. You guys want to guess? Well, you guys should know. You manage gyms. It's called the three C's. The th yeah, that's a great. That's right. Mm -hmm. We did. It was the three C's. It was. So number one is uh, location, which they data shows is actually quite important. Like it has to be relatively close. Yeah. To either work or home, otherwise, uh, in proximity, yeah, yes, attendance drops off quite a bit. Yeah, they they surveyed uh, all the members, and these were the three most important things when making a decision of purchasing a gym membership, which makes sense, right? <laughs> Ironically, this this morning, I was thinking like I had to, I wanted to get up and go uh, do some empty stomach cardio, right? Or just walk walk on the treadmill early first thing before I got up. So I set my alarm hour earlier. And it was like raining outside, and I was like, oh, I gotta go out, and then I gotta go drive over. If it was closer. I was literally had this conversation like this morning. I was like, if it was just a little bit closer, I would have got up and did it. So you had pancakes. I totally, yeah, so, <laughs> so I had pancakes instead. <laughs> no. no, I totally didn't, man. I was like, and then just between the rain, like crazy, I was like, nah, I don't feel yeah. like going out there. That's but funny. It, this morning at the, I was at the gym. It was hella slow, and I'm like, it's because it's raining. It is because <laughs> it's so raining. Funny. That's 100. Yeah. percent I was but, just like thinking but, about that. But yeah, locations um, really important. This is why home gyms people with home gyms tend to be more consistent it's just proximity and convenience because uh you know when you're motivated you know an extra 10 minute drive is not a big deal it's those times when you're not motivated where every little hurdle becomes so much larger that's a they don't, you know, the only way it can be consistent is if it's like you know within reason like you, i only have to go this far to keep this up and keep doing it yep. and so that's why the home gym was always like appealing because it's right. like super uh available it's become time. way more appealing to me than it used to i remember when we first started the podcast i was kind of the ah home gym suck i'm not yeah. a home gym person i'd rather go to i want to be there around everybody working out and stuff yeah. but i mean t this morning is a perfect example of if i had like a full-on setup where i had a you know, treadmill or something downstairs, I, I would 100% yep. got up. Yep. It was yep. literally the fact that I gotta go outside in the rain and then I drive a little while. Yep. Nah, I'm not doing it. Yep. So, yep. Yep. all right, next is uh, cleanliness. Uh, this again, when you look at the data, gyms that are dirty. Now, this isn't necessarily, this isn't, some people confuse this with like new versus older gyms. That's not what they mean. No, no, no. no. They literally mean clean. Like you go in the locker room and there's not toilet paper on the floor and it's disgusting or the equipment itself yeah. isn't covered in. You don't have a green pool of, of, of muck and soup. Yeah. Yes, yes. And this <laughs> I feel like this is obvious though, right? This is kind of This how seems obvious. I feel for like any anything consumer related, right? I think that yeah. if I go to a restaurant, I want like cleanliness has to be up there. If you go to a store, you it want It like, an impression immediately. It does. It, yeah. I mean, it, it, I, so I think that clean, and I, I think especially the bathrooms. I'm like, I'm especially, super- Especially. Yeah. I, I don't know. This <laughs> yeah. is so funny, but there's times when I'll go to a restaurant and if yeah. a restaurant has like a really nice bathroom, it'll- even if the food wasn't amazing the first time, I'll come back and try it again because the bathroom Maybe is so I'm clean. Wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's exactly how I feel. I I'm like, oh, that's this really nice bathroom yeah. there. We should probably try eating there one more time. Well, yeah, yeah. dude. If the bathroom is gross, what is the kitchen going to look like where you can't see? Oh. You know what they're doing back there. Oh, I've worked in a restaurant. I know you have, Justin. Yeah, yeah. It makes yeah. a big difference. All right. Do they wait? Uh, just since you, I do want to know that, is that okay. like? Um, do you remember? Uh, like that being a conversation from the manager and stuff like that, like how important the restroom was, or is that not that big of a deal? Um, I think it was all kind of lumped in together, like in terms the of whole, the floors, the whole. But yeah, yeah, like I, I'm pretty much if the bathroom ever had any issue, and it wasn't taken care of immediately. That was a definite reflection of how everything's run, you know, in the kitchen for sure. It hundred yeah. percent. I worked in a, a Italian restaurant, pizzeria. It was private, and it was this old Italian guy that owned it. I used to think he was in the mob, but anyway, if the bathroom was dirty. <laughs> For longer than two seconds, oh bro, <laughs> somebody's gonna get lit <laughs> up. Heads really I was a kid washing roll. dishes in the back, and I'd be like, "Oh, grab someone, clean the bathroom." Yeah. All right. So last, uh, this is the most important, by far, end of story, most important aspect of a gym that you should pay attention to if you're trying to to find a gym. If you're like, "Look, I'm gonna start a fitness journey, and I, you know, I want to be consistent. I want to get good results." This is something I don't want to have to, I don't want to quit like I've always done in the past. What's the thing I should focus on or pay attention to the most in the gym that I choose? And it's the culture. It's mm -hmm. the culture of the gym that makes the most uh, the most impact. Now, I, I heard a funny, a really, really funny um, conversation the other day. I was, I was on uh, social media and there was this guy talking about churches. And trust me, it's all connected. And he was talking about how some churches in their attempt 
at attracting more people will water down the message or mm-hmm. kind of lie a little bit to attract more people to make it seem like, in other words, it's like a watered down version of. They're just always positive. They don't give you the real like uh, hard facts. Sometimes. Yes, it was like yeah. it was like this watered down version of this Christianity. Is the, this is the critique of um, Joel, Joel Osteen. Osteen yeah. Yes. Is it like he he pulls from messages that are like just all kind of positive stuff like that? Doesn't want to get into the contra- it's the prosperity con- gospel. The, yeah, the, is that yeah. what it's called? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like if you pray hard enough, term. have enough faith, you'll get money, you'll get everything you want. You know, type uh, of thing. Like, uh, it doesn't say that at all. No. But anyway, this guy was mentioning this and like he was talking about how ineffective it is. Not only is it not accurate, but it also the churches that do that just are not effective at really helping people. And then he called these churches, and I died laughing because my buddy sent it to me. He said, these churches are the planet fitness of churches. Oh. I <laughs> died. And it was such a good analogy. Yeah. Because here you have a culture. Uh, this is a company culture, right? So individual planet fitnesses might be different depending on how they're managed. But the company culture is to attract more people, we're going to offer free pizza. We're not going to have squat racks and cages. We're not going to allow deadlifts. We're going to yeah. be the cheapest membership. And we're going to punish people for grunting and wearing tank tops in the gym. Yeah. And through that, we should be more effective. And the truth is they're less effective. They're less effective because they've watered down what real fitness is by offering free pizza. Terrible message. That's not saying you can't eat pizza, but you're a gym. Why are you offering pizza? And it's not to say that, you know, and grunting, you're going to, you're going to punish the most consistent members and take away the exercise that are most effective, albeit most difficult, but also serious lifters. And as a result, they've weakened the message of fitness and are helping uh, less people as a result. And so what's the culture that you're looking for in a gym? Well, you want one that is supportive, motivating, that feels uh, like you like you belong, uh, that the people want to see you succeed, that mention when you haven't been there in a little while. Like people actually notice that you're gone when you're gone and, and you come back. That's the culture. The culture of the gym ends up becoming your coach. And the equipment of the gym is inconsequential. I've, I've managed... Yep. Big box locations that were so old, literally, that if it rained too much, there were segments of the gym where the ceiling tiles would collapse from water leaking. And the equipment was so old that the plates didn't match half the time. And the equipment itself was like from the 80s. Yeah. And because of the culture, we were the top producing club in a large company of, of over 300 locations. And it had nothing to do with the equipment. It had yep. nothing to do with how new it was. Mm-hmm. It, it had everything to do with just the the environment that we created for our members and people wanted to show up and be consistent. And that's what you want to find in a gym in order to, to find yeah, I think success. people, I think people will forgive the first two uh, or put up with a lot with the first two. If the culture is that amazing, oh, if mm-hmm. it has that cheers vibe yeah. to it, when you come in, um, <clears throat> then I think there's a, a lot, not only that, but when the culture is so good, then you catch actually members and stuff like helping the place stay clean and things like that. Yes. I've been in part of gyms where it's like that, where, the whole and the m- random members will yeah. be reacting so other members uh yeah other members weights or mm-hmm. they'll be picking up trash in the bathroom like whoa and i think that has a lot to say about that when you've done a really good job of creating that culture i mean and let's be honest this is uh crossfit killed this yeah. i mean this is such a great example yeah. they killed it they had minimal equipment they had a garage looking gym. Yeah. yeah. They had They're none in of the industrial fancy stuff. areas of town. Yeah. You know. it, Terrible circulation. Yeah. yeah no uh, AC. Minimal no equipment, yeah. concrete and floors. They crushed nothing it. Nothing comfortable. Because what they created was a culture. In yeah. fact, you talk to people today who still go. I have a good friend of mine, uh, Chuck, real good friend of mine. He's actually one of the one of the pastors at the church uh, that I go to, and he still does he does CrossFit. And I tease him about it, right? Like, yeah. you, I said, you know who loves CrossFit? He's like, who? I said, chiropractors and physical therapist. <laughs> and he laughs, and we, I tease him, and he goes, yeah. you know why I go, man? He goes, it's the culture. Yeah. He yeah. goes, I love the environment. Nailed of people. It. Yeah. And I it's said, hard right, to argue dude. that. It's it hard is. to argue that. It, it is. It's the most important thing. So when you go to a gym, it's like, are the advanced members helping beginners? Um, do people know when you're gone? Does it feel like when you show up, like, man, these people really care about my fitness and my health in genuine, real ways? Like, that's what you're looking for. I mean, I have the 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 privilege of being able to be a member of multiple gyms, and I belong to multiple gyms precisely because they have different cultures that will serve yeah. different needs that I have. Like, if I want a more relaxing environment, one where I'm going to go and, you know, kind of, you know, take care of myself, maybe emotionally, spiritually, whatever, there's one gym. If I'm going to go after it, you know, and work out real hard, there's another gym that I go to. 
It's just, it makes such a big difference. It's funny because thinking about CrossFit, it's, it's totally a reflection of like when I would train with a team and the team was like, we, we would even train for football sometimes with like the, the younger guys and the, you know, the freshmen were in there. We'd all pack into this. It was basically a, a, a room. Like it was like one of those trailer rooms that you'd have like a, um, you know, a classroom out of, oh, and they got those portables turned, yeah, turned into a gym, and it was like so small, and, and there was just racks like lined around the room. Everybody was just in there like sardines, and then somebody's ripping ass, and it's like <laughs> awful. It's a toxic environment, but we're all like, yeah, like it, we're in this together. And, you know, I would never seek that out, you know, like <laughs> ever. But you know what? We had like a bond and a pact, and like we're doing this together, and you know, and it's like they figured that out how to do that like commercially. It's just just, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, are you lifting weights, eating a ton of food, and struggling? You're not packing on any muscle. You're not building any muscle at all. You're not getting stronger. Well, check it out. We have a hard gainer guide. This can be your ultimate resource to turn that around. Pack on some muscle mass with our hard gainer guide. It's totally free. You can get it by downloading it, clicking on the link in the description below. You, you bring up uh, physical therapy and chiropractors that love CrossFitters with that. You know, uh, I got to bring this up. I saw in the notes that Katrina had that NASM, um, CES, I believe, is half off right now. Yeah, NAS, which is, we talk, and obviously, if you've been listening to the show for a long time, you've heard us talk at nauseum how that certification was probably one of the most impactful certifications for all of us. Correctional exercise. Yeah, by oh, far. Yeah. It, you're, 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 Best one, I think. You're, first off, I want to say this to people who aren't trainers, that they need to understand this. Because when I say correctional exercise, I think the average person thinks of rehab, yeah. injury, they think of pain, which is all true. What they don't think of is like getting better results, building muscle, burning body fat, all the things that they want. So when they hear correctional exercise, unless they're in pain or unless they're there's something really calling out to them. They're like, eh, you know, kind of boring. Correctional exercise is strength training. Correctional exercise is muscle building. It's just done in a way to optimize the way that you move, which actually leads to better muscle building and better results. So correctional exercise is for everyone. And if you're a trainer or coach and you understand this, this gives you the tools that you need to individualize strength training. That's what makes a trainer so valuable from an exercise perspective is that I can individualize my training for the person I'm looking at. And it's correctional exercise knowledge that does that. It's not, you know, exercises for chest and back and shoulders and stuff like that. It's literally, I'm looking at this person move, what movements are going to benefit them the most and how can they perform them in a way that'll benefit them the most. That's what gets them the best results. It was so interesting yeah. to me that leadership, uh, back when I worked at 24 Fitness, did not um, really promote or talk about how valuable it is. I, I found out just by going through, right? So I had gone through several NASM certifications and eventually made my way through CES. I believe I did the, the, um, the SFS first. And then I did CES and afterwards was just blown away. And then I, that's all I would tell my train. Like you have to get this, yep. mm -hmm. this course, but nobody else had told me about that. And it, I mean, it, I wish that I, I had the numbers to go back and like how successful I was financially as a trainer before that. And then after that, I know that it, w it made a huge impact on the way that I would recommend personal training, yeah. how, how my closing percentage when I had somebody who first time I've met them and then I could show them something that alleviated chronic pain, like doing that, so valuable. You figured out, yeah, your real value that you could provide and you could prescribe, um, you know, to your clients and really um, help them in, in their everyday life. So it's not like, it's not just like their initial goal coming in, which is obviously something you're going to address, but this like, this was a whole nother value point that I think that the client didn't even realize they're going to be able to receive. I, I think as a young kid, I think that I, I must have thought that that type of training was just for like advanced age or old yeah, people. Yeah, totally. And so, and I probably was like, That's oh. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I but think like everybody experiences pain. It's, it's, everybody. You know, it's inevitable. It's, it's not just that. I, my first experience with correctional <laughs> exercise was a silly one, but this was as a meathead young trainer. I'm probably... 19, 18 years old, super, and just want to get big. I don't even care about, like, if you say correctional exercise to me, I would have laughed, like, <laughs> where, you know, just get me to bench more or whatever. Right. And I'll never forget, like, I my I don't remember what number it was at, but my bench press was stuck at a particular number. And in those days, in the 90s, 
Bench press was how you. This is how you bragged about how strong you are. It was the exercise. Monday. Right? Oh, this is when you did your yeah. rotator cuff. That's right. Yeah. And, and I, I remember it was stuck at a particular weight. And I saw this ad for this rotator cuff device, and it, they sold me on it because it said that it'll increase your bench. They didn't say it fixes shoulder pain. They said this will make you bench more. Mm -hmm. So I did the exercise, and I think two days later, I added 50, 10 or fifteen pounds to my bench press, and that was the first time I was like, oh. Oh, like this, shoulder stability matters. Like this, yeah. it makes you stronger. <laughs> yeah, it's not just for you know old people or for uh, for rehab. Yeah, totally anyway, huge That's difference. True. Dude, I had such a good, such a fun Saturday. So Saturday we we went to uh, Toby Mac concert. Toby Mac and Mercy Me. Do you guys know that? Bro, how many, so how many how many how many of these concerts are you up to this now? Is the dog? Third one this year. You're like reliving my junior high. I know. <laughs> I know, DC right? talks next. Is, yeah, yeah. next yeah. is gonna be a Cal Star Hume Lake. That's coming next. Yeah, yeah. like that. Oh, that's like, I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. so it's funny. Fun I, got, to I, got a, I was yeah. told someone talked about that. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, Hume Lake's a blast. I heard. Yeah, I loved that's, it. That's yeah. what everybody keeps saying. You should go be a counselor there. No, you have a good time. So, so first of all, I didn't know who these people were. I didn't know Toby Mac. I didn't know Mercy Me. I didn't know any of that. Yeah. And so Jessica and I, the first like Christian, you know, kind of concert we went to was Brandon Lake. And we were just like, I've told you guys about that. I was so like, oh my God, this is amazing. You're like moved by it, yeah. The environment is incredible. Everybody there, it's like, it's such a different experience than any of the concert. So her and I made this like conscious, like this is what we're going to do. Like we're going to go, anytime someone's nearby, we're going to go to this. So then we went to uh, Elevation Worship, which was awesome. And then uh, we found Toby Mac was coming and we knew some of his songs. I don't know who he was. So I reached out to some of our friends from the church and we're like, hey, you guys want to go to this? They're like, wow, he's still performing. We're like, why well, has he been around for a while? What's going on? <laughs> so, Is he opening up for Amy Grant? So, <laughs> so Jessica and I are like, let's do this. So I got a party bus for us. So I had a party bus come pick you us up. Did? I swear. <laughs> I swear I did. I had a bar. The a irony. I know. I had a party bus. Take shots. This was new. Hey, you know what's funny? I told them too. I said this is. I said this is. New, this is like new Sal and Jessica party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not like old yeah, yeah, yeah. Sal and Jessica party. Totally different. Like we're taking communion. Just yeah, you know. Yeah. But uh, no, we, it drove us over there. There were about ten of us. Where did you guys? Where was it at? Oakland. 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 Rio. So we drove up there, and man, we had the absolute greatest time. It was such a good time. Everybody's so. I mean, these are just great people. So connecting, so fun, you know, singing along. It's just, it was a, it was a great time. Man. Yeah, yeah. You know? Do you, uh, do you think, because I know you've experienced, this This was actually on my topic to bring up. I don't know what led me to to, to bring this up. I think Katrina and I were having some, some conversation around this. And I was just talking about like a uh, flow state. And, oh, it was driving. That's why I heard she was talking about. I've told you guys how since she's got into driving, like she's like stopped drinking, right? Have I told you that? Like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how oh, much I good idea. That up yeah. You probably yeah. shouldn't drink a drink. Not, <laughs> <laughs> the way yeah. you said that. No, she you know gets how exhilarated much. feeling yes. from yeah. driving. Yeah. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, everybody, she didn't drink and drive. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, not <laughs> connecting those together. I mean, you know that if you've listened for a long time or you guys know that I, Katrina likes to like to drink. That's her thing. I yeah. tease her all the time yeah. about like she's she could have a drink on Tuesday. That's not like me to do She has three livers too. Yeah, and she could drink me on the table. Drink me under the table. So, um, so yeah. She's so like she, uh, she really has lost the love for it. Like for someone who is like, it's. In, I mean, in her blood, she loves it. Uh, admittedly, because would tell she you, gets that feeling from the driver. Yeah, yeah. And I was explaining that um, that it's like flow state. And so the point of me bringing this up is that do you think when you get what you're feeling when you get to like a, a Christian concert like that where everybody's kind of worshiping, singing all together, mm -hmm. that flow. it's it's like a like a group flow I feeling? Understand. Is it does it remind you of that? And I know you've experienced in jujitsu, but that's a little more yeah. individual. Have you ever experienced like group flow before? Um, I have, yes, definitely. I've felt it in some of the teams that I've managed. I've felt it with you guys creating programs sometimes on the podcast yeah, yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. This was different. This is like just this overwhelming feeling of, um, I mean, for lack of a term, love, uh, uh, appreciation, feeling humble. Um, it's just, and to hear people and see people all around you. There was this like one woman, we look back and she's, you know, there's a song comes on and she starts crying and then, <clears throat> You know, or someone's hugging her, and just this. The environment is just. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It feels like yeah. you're, the whole place is filled with the spirit. You so know? you don't think it's like group flow. It's not. It's different than what I've experienced from flow. Yeah. You know? But it's it's uh it does feel connected in a similar way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And part of me bringing that up too is just I was thinking about like how um you know that, that's something that I feel like I get when I also drive and so like that. And I was wondering. Well, you're just in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it, it made me think like you know I wonder if there's any and it makes me want to go back and reread some of those books and see if they they talked about studies around just 
how how important that is to us as humans to to chase that state. Mm -hmm. Like, and is it and and I would be it would be neat to go back and look and see like. Or there are periods of times in my life where, let's say, I, I was, you know, I don't, know that, I don't necessarily have to be depressed, but like where I was down or just in a funk, mm -hmm. or not. and it, was there were, was that during a time where I had an extended period of time where I didn't get to experience flow, like yeah. I hadn't engaged in, in the future, the past, or I feel like it, every time you're able to really hone in on right now and like the present, yeah, uh, space, and, and you just focus on that, you, the it just elevates my mood like i'm so much happier and it's it's a trip because it's like it, most of the time i'm living in the future i think i've pretty much figured that out yeah. for myself and yeah. i've been trying to kind of unpack that and like how can i just like what tools and what things can i do to introduce yeah. myself to get back to this like, right. present state uh, well, it's so such a, it's such an uh, um uh, you know addictive intoxicating amazing feeling to 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 find it i remember when i was I, part of what makes me miss playing basketball so much is moments of that you get that yeah. especially when you play with somebody who you've played with for a, like a really long time my my best friend and i played a lot of ball together and when the game is just flowing right, and he's you, mm -hmm. you don't like even you have to communicating with. Yeah, them. yeah, exactly. You don't even see him, and, and he but throws you know you a pass, and you're just there. Yeah, and it's just it's, gonna be there. it's the most yeah. amazing feeling to tap into that, uh, and it, I don't know, it gives me this incredible, uh, overwhelming sense of joy. And so I'll, you know, I thought, man, it, 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 should this be something that I uh, go after intentionally? Like, hey, I need to make sure that on a weekly basis, I chase flow somewhere, somewhere, whether that be in a snowboarding or driving or playing a game of basketball or probably music for you. Like, yep. you know, those like in, in how important is that to overall health? I, yeah. I bet there's some stuff related to that. I think it depends on how it's used, right? Like if it's if you're uh, chasing it as a way to escape often then it might be a problem, right? I don't think it's escapism. I think it's, it's like Justin's saying, it's the most ultimate feeling of present. Yeah, it's just... It's the opposite of, of escaping. Saying? Yeah, but you hear what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, some like, people could use it for that. I yeah, know what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like, like your home life is... So you're just like, I'm just going to go and be in, in this state of flow doing this other thing and not focusing on what I'm supposed to. Not, hmm. In other words, not being present in the places I need to be yeah, present. Yeah, I wonder if that would be like... like let's say like... let's say uh, Think about obsessed people. Well, no, are, I was just thinking about... Like, okay, so let's, let's, run, let's run a scenario like that like let's say like Katrina and I are fighting it's just stuff is really bad at home and we're on the brink of divorce and I'm like I gotta get off I gotta go take off and do a snowboarding trip and I go take off and I go yeah. snowboard and have the most amazing flow state day right. is that necessarily bad no but if that's all you chase yeah oh sure have you, like you never just Obsession. Run, run run away from it yeah yeah, yeah. cause I could yeah. see that how that could become your your god right you yeah worship. or chemical dependence mm -hmm. or something if you want to associate that so much of human cause we have this like the gift of consciousness but it's also this challenge right which is we know our demise we could think and ponder about things so it's almost like we're supposed to be like consciously anxious yeah. or uncomfortable so so much of what we do is run away from that whether it's abuse food or alcohol or technology or you know um i mean look at technology how how much quiet time do we give ourselves not much yeah. it's all about like i gotta just you know, because you could be in flow on tech too, right? You can be in flow on social media and not know what the hell's going around. You. Did you guys see? I yeah. put it in my notes, to, could, but I honestly I didn't get a chance to like really dig deep on it. I'd seen two commercials now for it. The um, teen Instagram. What's that? Teen Instagram? Oh, look it up, Doug. Okay, so I'm good. we can look it up together. So it looks like because it's like Instagram is promoting a, a separate platform. Oh, good. Or a platform or, or a section within the platform. That's specifically so it's like for more controls. Oh yeah, so there's all kinds of like controls on it. I, I, I surprise you guys. That's I thought for sure you guys would have already. Heard. Yeah, brilliant. It's brilliant. It I good. thought, but I don't know exactly what it, uh, it consists of. But I saw two commercials, and I'm like, oh, I got to write that down to to look into with the guys. I thought for sure actually one of you guys yeah, would know more. I know, well, Snapchat is the big the big one that uh, they use the most, and it's because it, they have a feature on there where it's like you you can look on the map and see where all your friends are. They just turn it on, and yeah. it's like they really pay attention to that. Like, what's so and so doing? And and uh, but yeah, I haven't heard anything about Instagram. Okay, right teen now. accounts. Tell me about it. Yeah, so they're available only in some locations now and will be introduced globally in early 2025. So it's protective teen safety settings. Yeah, yeah. Keep tell teens me. safe on Instagram by limiting unwanted contact, showing content that's right for their age, and helping them manage their time on Instagram. Uh, okay. I mean, it sounds like a good direction. Right, I mean, yeah. Deny least their the, teens' requests to, to make their safety settings option. less protective. Oh, so they have to... Okay, so this is interesting. See, this is how... Um, 
I was telling you guys my my cousin how they because the, you can't do it on iPhone but you can do it on um, the Samsungs where uh, everything runs through the parents they like, control everything they control yeah. it. so yeah. they have to the, the, if the kids go or do something like that it, they have to first ask approval and then mm-hmm. it comes to the parents phone and the, and the, the parents just yes or no and then then it allows them access mm-hmm. to it so it sounds like they built something like that into it, actually Instagram hmm. that's interesting that's it sounds like a good market response to do you think it'll be useful i mean do you think it would change your mind about letting your kid use it no i mean i think i think it's a good it's in the right direction but i don't think you should um outsource you know what your kids you know what i mean like in other words like i'll trust instagram to like determine i mean well the truth is it's better than nothing for sure teenagers will find a way to look let's talk about snapchat for a second you brought up snapchat you're right it's the most used one you know what that was built on Sending pictures that are deleted. Yeah. The, the, a, why the hell are you advertising dissolves. to kids yeah. <laughs> an app where you can send a picture that then disappears? That doesn't sound weird to you? Yeah. That's why that's the one my daughter brought up years ago. I was like, no, no way are you going to use an app that you can send a picture. I don't care how much com- you know communication you could do otherwise. That's weird to me that that's a kid's app and their primary function. It's not anymore. Now there's lots of things on it. Yeah, but it there's... was... Send it's a picture like that, that gets deleted right away. Like, yeah, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that is a weird. Feature, that, yeah, right? that doesn't Promote. make me, that doesn't make me feel very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I uh, um uh I wanted to ask you, Adam. I saw you post a video because I know of your injury and your hamstring. You started doing using BFR. Oh yeah, so I did that uh, um, yesterday. What's I, I duh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I so forgot. I mean, of course, it's perfect. So it was always in uh, on. On my plan of rehabbing back, um, I think I told you guys this. I think I brought it up on the show. Um, after I did that whole session with um, yeah, Kyle, more bruising. yeah, I got more bruising, and it just the the isometrics were like too intense for mm-hmm. the hamstring. So I basically had to just kind of lay off of it. And <clears throat> it still sense like if I when I'm when I'm I'm on the elliptical or walking on the treadmill, I can do about thirty minutes before it starts to bother me. Um, so it's still there, right? So I'm still in the healing process, but I was just getting so antsy about like doing something for my legs. Uh, and I, and I had already done like, uh, leg extensions and even the, uh, you know, coming down on the negative on the leg extension, I could feel the hamstring a little bit and it's still stabilizing. Yeah. But getting up and down from a chair, not so bad. It didn't bother me as much. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll just I'll I'll BFR my 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 quads and hamstrings and see uh, how that feels. Felt really good. I was also pleasantly surprised. I actually got a little sore from it. I was super. I Katrina. I had her do it with me too, and uh, got a great pump from it. Felt really good uh, from doing that. So, but the plan was to do that. I just thought I'd end up rehabbing a little bit longer before I introduced it. And I just wanted to see. It turns out it's the it's a, it's a earlier step than you thought. Yeah. To do BFR. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm I was excited and it and it went really well. I don't so know why I didn't think of that. So I I will include it. And really the thought for the audience, the, the thought process on this is that um you know, I'm coming up on my last couple of weeks of this whole journey. And so I'm really trying to, you know, bring the leanest You look lean right now, by the way. The leanest way. version of me right now. I think I'm getting close to single digits. You, if you're not single digits, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I'll be really Your picture ups- look like it. I know. I'll be a little upset if I'm not. I think I should. There's certain uh, things I can see on my physique. You get line. lean in your abs real fast. Then, yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's the case. My abs don't look like yours unless I'm single digit. Yeah, I know. I've, we've known that about me always that I've been mm-hmm. able to, to see. I can see my abs at 11%. I know that for sure. But I get these veins in them that I, when I can see the vascularity then in my you know. abs, then I kind of know mm-hmm. I'm in single digits. But anyways, the, the point of bringing up the BFR was that, you know, so my, my goal is obviously bring the leanest version of me that I can right now in this time. And so I've introduced this, you know, list cardio. I have now mm-hmm. reduced the calories. And my biggest fear uh, of not being able to show really good results is uh, even though I'm doing everything right diet-wise, I've picked up a little bit of the volume just through uh, higher reps and sets uh, for the upper body is my legs are the, you know, the, the biggest weighing thing on me and not being able to train them. So I'm like, 
am I going to atrophy there, mm. but then maybe build a little bit in my upper body enough to not really show much. That's a good point. So, mm. so I was like, I got to do something to the legs to at least slow down the atrophy as much as I possibly can. How and I high believe, up do you get a tie? Like on really the, high. Like, yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Really high. So it's like pinching. Yeah. 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 No, it's almost like you're, it's like if you were wearing bikini underwear, it's <laughs> strapped all walk around with your little, <laughs> little strapped all. Yeah, well, it's, committed. Bro, it's brutal. It's, it's brutal. Oh, sucks. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it burns. For the yeah. lower body? Yeah. Oh, you want to I was so surprised someone. that Katrina wanted, she saw me doing it. She's like, I want to try that. I'm like, okay. How would <laughs> she think? She was, she was like, oh my God. My, she, yeah, her legs are sore from People it. who don't know, so BFR, you, you essentially, you occlude a muscle by using a, a knee wrap. So you tie it around your upper thighs, then you do exercise. And because of the, the you reduce what's called venous outflow, <laughs> blood outflow, it, the blood pools and the muscle builds up and you essentially starve the muscle of oxygen. Um, and if it's not a bad thing, so it's like, Oh my God, I'm going to, you know, you don't tie it off to the point where you lose circulation completely. Yeah. But what it does is because the, the oxygen is depleted and the waste buildup it pools, uh, your fast twitch muscle fibers get turned on and activated as if you're lifting heavy weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though you're not doing heavy weight at all. In fact, you didn't do any weight, right? It was like body, body weight. weight. Yeah. And I got sore. Yep. So, and I'm not that deconditioned. I've only been off of legs for it's a really interesting novel way to train. It's for a, rehab. It's incredible for rehab. That's yeah, how yeah, I think. I thought, you know, I know we, we played around with it, uh, you know, years ago when it was just becoming popular, mm -hmm. um, for hypertrophy in general. And, and I also, I saw some benefits for it, but I really see the benefits in something like this. Like the, the fact that yeah, so I can limited get, in options. Yeah. I can't even, I mean, my, my hamstrings are, is so, is still so weak or it's still healing that I can't can't do hardly anything for my legs at all. Even walking uh, aggravates it. But the fact that I could do this BFR training and get this massive pump on my legs and even get a little sore from it as if I lifted heavy weight mm. is pretty cool. You know? Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right. Back to the show. Speaking of yeah, walking and interesting technology. There's, did you see? And I know we've brought this up before in terms of like an omni treadmill. Yeah, but like I hadn't seen one that was like this before. I guess like a Disney Imagineer uh, invented this uh, as the hollow tile. I guess the Doug, if you want to kind of find that and uh, put it up there. But so they're individual motors. So it's like it's almost like a cone shape. And so what happens is it like tilts and it goes like all these different directions, but it spins. So when you stand on it, on these little tiles, like it's like you're, you're moving and you're kind of tilting and it, you can go in basically any direction within like this, like four by four, uh, space. And so if you're in, in like, um, virtual, obviously that makes a lot of sense, but like you could even have, let's say they incorporate this into their parks where it's like, you know, they, they literally the ground moves however they want it to move for you as you're going through, you know, <laughs> I can see them using it for all kinds that of things. So it's cool. trippy. Oh, dude. wow. Look at that. It's literally like one of the coolest uh, inventions I think that's come out in a long time. Wow. Look at that. It dude. just moves you like whatever direction it wants to move you. That is so cool. Yeah, I was tripping out on that, dude. Interesting. Like, you know, one of those. this is this can be, I mean, not just for gaming. Obviously, people use it for gaming <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Yep. But I could see how remote workers could use something like this to control machines and build. Yeah. You and could. Move objects, around. you could just move them and like you could, you could literally program it so it just. Yeah, it does what, whatever you want. What has the, have you guys looked at the stats? Remember, we, I mean, we talked a lot about it right after COVID, um, the return to, to work. What has it landed? It's been long enough Good now. Question. It's been long enough now that I feel like. I know that the, I know the federal employees, I think a majority of them work uh, yeah. one day a week at the office like that. <laughs> so I know that they're going, they're trying to make some sense. of the main companies like yeah. mandated people come back. Yeah. I know, I know a good portion, but the last I had checked and it wasn't that long ago, we were still at 50%. Wow. So it was still uh, like half the people were, were remote working. I yeah. wonder if that's like, uh, I'm curious I'm to sure where it's, it's at now. A lot of yeah. And if it's going to be going forward, it's going to be that way. I'm, I mean, I mean, I know, I know around here, uh, a lot of the people I know, family members, a lot of them still work, Mm -hmm. a lot from home they yeah. still do yeah and that's why you see them in in more areas that are remote too like up in the mountains and versus like everybody having to be in the city to work 
So I, I wouldn't like it, to be honest with you, personally. I wouldn't like no. – well, I, I wouldn't like working in an office either, to be honest. I hated all of it. But I wouldn't like being home and isolated on top of uh, all of it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I do think the blend like is kind of a cool. place to go. Yeah. I think the blend Especially is if you cool. have kids and stuff. I can see that. Yeah. I, I think the blend is because I, I also appreciate going to work, being with people, the, the culture, you yeah. know, like the same, you talk about a, a gym that runs really efficiently. Yeah. A business is all, is also as, the culture. Same. Yeah, yeah. is as important, right? Is the culture. And so hard to create culture over zoom, which I think is why a lot of the big companies forced or mandated the, the employees to come back at least half the time was yeah. because you just can't. It's just almost impossible yeah, to build it away from you. Easy. No, speaking, really cool. speaking of work, a uh, huge study, uh, long. It was a long-running Harvard grant study. It was launched in 1938. It's now on its second generation of participants, and it's about what kinds of things help ensure success, professional success, as an adult. Like, what do you do as a child that helps, you know, predict. Uh, professional success. You want to know the number one of the number one things is this is not delayed gratification. No, it's doing the chores. It's doing chores. Mm. Interesting. If children have responsibilities at home, yeah, where they feel like they're contributing, they purpose. Yeah. Yes, that that is a a a strong uh, contributor to future professional success. And this study has been done, been running since 1938. Mm -hmm. So it's like really good data. Yeah, it makes it makes sense because they're being trained at a very young age to to do the things that they might not, might not necessarily want to do, mm -hmm. but they need to yeah. do because they get it done, right? So I feel like if you've been conditioned at a very young age, I don't know necessarily if that's a, that great of a thing though. What? Well, I mean, it's just like so all it's, it's like schools have done this for kids, right? Schools have conditioned you to be a nine to five employee, yeah. and so chores are also conditioning you to be this like do what you're told type of situation. And so maybe that's what it's connected to. I, well, I could see Is it necessarily a great thing. Sure, maybe, but I think if you're, it's a part of a different environment like you're contributing to the family i do it too we do this together yeah but it starts real young like uh my wife's really good about this with the little ones because look my, my my you know my i have a two and a four year old like how much are they gonna help right <laughs> if anything they make stuff take longer but she's really good at getting them to like help and i can see it i can see the benefit in them just because they feel like they're oh yeah contributing yeah. you know like they, they take the laundry and they take it out of the wash and put it in the dryer and it takes forever but they do well, it. that's always my language with the kids is like, can you guys come help me right now? You know, it's yeah. not go do this. And, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah I need yeah. help with this over here, you yeah. know, and it totally changes the entire mood of it. But <laughs> I mean, it's still like a lot of resistance, especially now with like uh, all the different activities with friends and, and yeah. you know, distractions with video games or whatever yeah. else, like cool thing that, you know, gets in the way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you want to like, like, look, like you get, like you're a part of the family and we need you to to contribute. And this is like your job, this is your assignment. This is your yeah. part that you can do. And it it, it gets lost. You just got to remind them all constantly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And there were definitely moments when I was a kid, right? You know, I didn't want to. Like my dad, uh, you know, he's old school. So, you know, Saturday morning, he would wake me <laughs> He would wake me up at like 7 a.m. You know, I was a teenage boy. I want to sleep in. And this is how he'd wake me up. He'd open the door, like, real you know, loud. So I thought, wake up. We got to work. And he closed the door. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> All right, here we yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hard work, too. Yeah, no, it's not <laughs> All cold outside. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, washing his tools. And, oh. Do you remember how old, you, how old were you? Do you remember? Oh, oh. I, well, I, he was taking me to work as young as eight. But I wasn't really working. You know, I would just kind of show up and yeah, play. Yeah. But when I was, by the time I was 12, 13, like I was expected to do, like I was, wa I typically I'd start out by washing his tools because he worked with, you know, cement, mud, that kind of stuff. So I'd have to go outside and spray things off and get him buckets of water. And then it was like mixing, you know, the cement and carrying the the mud in and out of the house and, uh, you know, the houses we're working yeah, on. Yeah. But it was, I mean, it was, yeah. Now, do you, did he- Early as hell too. Do you remember when he first started to uh, like pay you? Did you get paid ever? The first time he paid me, uh, was when my cousin and I worked together with him and I didn't ask him. I didn't expect it. He just, it was a summer. And at the end of a week, I remember he said, he, he handed us money and we looked at him like, what's this? And he's like, you pay for work. And I was like, uh, I don't know what to do with this. I'm like, okay, thanks. That, that summer was my first time ever getting paid. So I must've been 14. And uh, we, my right. cousin and I bought uh, BMX bikes. <laughs> the money that we saved. Yeah. Uh, Arbo. Huh? 
Which kind? Oh, uh, a, a mongoose. Uh, uh, mongoose. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Haro. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a big haro. Yeah, saved haro up like five hundred bucks. Dude. Do you remember your Sick. first uh, was like a purchase? Your first you saving up to buy something from work was? I think it was a. Um, well, my biggest goal was to buy a truck, uh, and it was like a total piece. But I, 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 it was three summers in a row that I worked for this specific goal and I like saved up and then I finally bought my first 1956 GMC truck and it was like, you know, it could run and it was like, had a 400 big block engine in there and like, it was loud, obnoxious and like super, wow. way too much power. Uh, and bolts would fly off and everything. <laughs> and it was like, I, so cool. dude, I loved it, but it was like so dangerous, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I earned it, you yeah. know? And it was like, like Sal was described, I, I got up at five in the morning. I like had to load trucks all day and then, you know, do all the grunt work for everybody. Every construction guy, they'd take me out and I'd have to like go into the house and fix shit. And, you know, I'd have to like handle all these huge windows and, you know, it was, it was tough work, but it was like, I knew at the end of all that I could afford this like $3,000, uh, vehicle. So That's, yeah. Uh, what about you? Adam? Uh, mine was a stereo system. So I bought a, uh, I still have that, by the way, today. The same stereo system? I still have it. No way. And they're great. Is it the dual cassette one? No, 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 no. I had the, so it was it was more so the amp and the speakers. That was the most expensive part was the, uh, they were uh, Onkyo amp and then DCM speakers. And uh, back then they were like the top of the line really. And I had, I wanted them from the previous year. So I had to work a couple of years to save up. It was a couple thousand dollars for, and back then that was a lot. That was a ton of money. You yeah, still was, have it? That's so I rad. still have it. Yeah. I still have it. And uh, You know, old stereo. Damn, I sold my truck to yeah. this guy in Denmark. Did you? <laughs> yeah. He took it all the way over there? Yeah. Shipped it out there. No yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Those old stereos, they, they still sound good. It's they, Those that speakers, they sound great. The hardest part is they've traveled so much. That they're I banged up. yeah, they're pretty banged up, and the, the the screen that goes on them, there's like a missing thing, and so they're like, I don't know, it's all. You know, what's crazy about this conversation because I'm thinking back to I, whatever memories are popping up of some of the work that I when my dad would take me. I, like one time we were at this house; it was three stories. It was a huge house. My dad was really good, so uh, you know, within I don't know how many years, by the time I was a teenager, he was well known for doing good stonework. So he'd do these mansions. Like he did Steve Wozniak's house. That's the, Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. One of the so I remember we were in this house. I don't know whose house it was, but it was a mansion and the third story he had to do these huge floors. So he's floating just mud on the floor. And my dad was fast. Like he would throw the mud and do it real quick. My job was to get the mud up there before he ran out. <laughs> so I'm going up and down and I was probably 14 going up and down the three stories of, uh, uh, you know, three flights of stairs holding, you know, buckets of mud. They're probably oh, wow. a good 70 pounds each. Yeah. And I had to load them, bring them up. Just Come, farmer carry. And as soon up. as I'd bring them yeah. up, the second, the second, the other two are empty already. Oh my God. And I'm going back down because he would dump them. Exhausting. Back and forth, back and forth, back and yeah. forth all day long. And I, I'll, you know, I remember that job. It was, we did that for a while. I remember getting home. And I'd come home and I'd just sit on the couch and just fall asleep. Yeah. Just, and my mom would just wake me up for dinner. Dead world. Yeah. Just dead, so, Yeah, slinging mud has to, slinging mud is definitely one of the most exhausting things that I ever did. I remember one time at the when I worked at Dairy, we laid a, a concrete slab, probably about the size of this area, but we did it through wheelbarrow, right? Normally you do a slab yeah. like this, you bring in a truck and stuff like that. Yeah, and you just mixing it we yourself. Had a, yeah, we yeah. had a wheelbarrow, a like that. a slab this oh, big. Yeah. And so, and I was the one mixing while he was shoveling and getting, and I was just like, <laughs> all day? Oh my God, yeah. that was, that's exhausting. It made dude. my hands so- Digging and mixing is brutal. I got, I, you know, I'd get blisters and I remember my, you know, of course I'd get blisters on my hands and my, and my dad, I, you don't want to complain to my dad ever. Because I remember as a young kid complaining the response I'd get. So I just didn't say anything. And he, I remember he saw my hands. He goes, let me see your hand. And he looked at it. He goes, come here. And he got he got some dried cement. <laughs> Poof, threw it on my hand. <laughs> right I'm like, I guess that's supposed to help. I don't know. Yeah. I, I do think there's something to be said, though, about, and I don't know if this is. Super glue, dude. That, 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 <laughs> that was my super glue. The, the stuff I know about chemicals now, I'm like, I, I hope I didn't do anything bad. Yeah. You know? 
I used to I used to love though coming home from a, an exhausting day of work. There's something about being all dirty and exhausted from labor. Well, that's what that's, I was going to say. Looking rewarding. back, how valuable is it? like nostalgia? Yeah, there, how, I remember when I when I left that type of work, and and there would be parts of me that would miss. It. I remind myself, what are you thinking? You don't miss yeah, that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you're an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I like, do romanticize it now. But like, yeah, hate yeah, it then. exactly. In it, it was like, what am I thinking? This is terrible. But when you think back, there was something rewarding about you know doing something like that all day like, long be, uh, being dirty so when i was real little when i first started going to work with him you know as an eight-year-old kid i'm not really doing much i'm just kind of hanging out but i remember like when no one's looking i'd get the cement or the glue and i'd stick it on my clothes so <laughs> i want to look like him you know? <laughs> like put it on my pants you know <laughs> come home like hey look i, I worked <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, what, so dirty, what in reality i was just outside breaking tiles <laughs> with a hammer and you know, all the garbage <laughs> just having fun or whatever yeah. but hey that it's like, like you said like i wouldn't want to do it because it's so hard but looking back fond fond memories of all that yeah, yeah. Of all that work. i know i wonder too sometimes like if that it was that part of my motivation to uh like make more money so i didn't have to do stuff like that like i, I can't remember what if that's what propelled me did you ever have conversations with a lot of the guys you'd work with i remember having a lot of conversations they were always trying to talk me out of doing the work like don't ever do this as like a career <laughs> <laughs> they were like don't ever consider this you know well i, I was, was like, actually I so i do construction i ironically i this is what that's what turned me off from entrepreneurship so i went through this like oh because you saw yeah so initially like the first thing i ever did was the lawn mowing thing so i my inter my in introduction myself of uh of entrepreneurship was that and that was a very positive experience now it wasn't crazy money it was enough money to put some but you, you still know, profited yeah exactly it was it was good it was profitable and it was i was like oh i love this then i got the job at the dairy when i worked at the ranch and I, I was there for three years and it got really close with the family and uh, I got to actually see the books, right? They would pull up because I remember I'd, I remember always asking for raises, uh, trying to get another raise, trying to get another raise, you know, from four dollars and fifty cents all the way to seven dollars. I made made it up there in three years. Right. And so like a quarter at a time. Boom. And uh, I remember always busting my ass to try and get a, another raise. And I remember one time my boss finally pulled out to like make me aware of like how much money they were you know what a great le what great leadership for him to show you that yeah 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 he pulled he pulled out the pls and like showed me and i went and i remember going like Whoa. oh my god that's all you guys <laughs> that's make it? Yeah. yeah and you work he's like yeah and i haven't taken a vacation in three years you know we have you know, someone has to be here yes, uh, all, so like no vacation for three years oh. only make barely barely scraping by and i was just like oh my god i don't want to be an entrepreneur because it looked so much better. That's how everybody thinks. Yes. Everybody looks at businesses and thinks that. Yeah. Everybody goes to a restaurant or goes to a shop. Yeah, and they go, somewhere. oh, freedom. You can just, it's, it's like, nah. It was like, I saw, I got to see behind the curtain and I went, oh, hell no, I don't want when this. When I had my studio, I had my wellness studio, um, you know, I, I had trainers that were making, I mean, as much as I was. And I was the owner. And all they had to do was pay a yeah. little rent and train their clients. Yeah. And I had to manage all the coaches, the whole facility, pay the rent, the insurance, the whole deal. Yeah, now I did it because, and this is how you know you're an entrepreneur, you do it anyway because for some reason you like it. Mm -hmm. You like, you know, that it's yours. You like the the autonomy, I guess, uh, and the control. Uh, who knows? Do you, I was going to say, do you, what do you think appealed to you? I, for me, it's the competitiveness of it. There's a competitive that's thing. Part Not of a it. lot of people could do it. That yes. Was always, yeah, part yeah, of my that's, motivation. That's the, that's the thing that gives, me, that gives me the most excitement about building a business yeah. is that, 80% fail, you know, mm -hmm. even you like greater stats. I yeah. do. Yeah. I love, I love, and I love being counted out and that you why we still live in California. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of people can pull it off. Oh, I know. Did you see that? Someone in the forum yeah. posted the houses in, in San Jose with the, the most expensive median, city, right? the median, median house in San Jose, 1.3. Oh. That's Dude. so funny. Remember I told you my grandma, both my, I my, feel that. my <laughs> grandparents' house sold recently. I think they bought it in, I don't remember what year, 1970 something, 60 something. They built it. And I think they bought it for, what did I say they bought it for? Was it like 40 grand or something like that? 20 something grand? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, my grandfather told me the difference between his house and the lower model house. And he's like, man, we really stretched ourselves. I think it was like 200 bucks. Like if you look at the models <laughs> and you know, you could get way more. It's another 200 another bucks. 200. Yeah. 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 Addition. God, we can't make yeah. it. Yeah. Dude. Uh, yeah. But back then San Jose was farmland. Yeah. It was all, it was yeah, all was farm orchards. Here, yeah. It was all orchards yep. and farm. Yeah. In fact, San Jose was, created to uh to grow the food 
to feed the, I think it was the naval base, right, in San Francisco, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So it was like, that the, was the original, it was all the really? farmland to grow the food. Well, so you know that feed. Salinas right here is like, some of, is the best climate year round than like any, there's only like two other places that oh, can be. growing? So, yeah. So, yeah. So for, oh, yeah. yeah. So for. They have a lot of farmland. Mm-hmm. There, yeah. And it's I also think, one of the gang capitals of the world. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. Is also, it one of the gang yeah, capitals? Yeah, I think so. Is it? Inconvenient so. fact, yes. I didn't know that. That's I don't know. I remember hearing that when I managed the gym there. Yeah. Didn't know that. Hey, have you guys? Uh, have you guys officially started um, like the, the Christmas stuff? Having like we're already watching Christmas yeah. movies. Are already out. We're already pulling the hot chocolate out. I like, convinced all- Courtney that we can do it. Like we can jump the Thanksgiving. Uh, we can get right to the Christmas and and you know we had started bringing stuff out, but the kids didn't get into it. So it's just not, it's uh, not up no. yet. Yeah, yeah. I was like, come on guys, yeah, support my, me here. I said the Christmas drinks is where I start. I start with the, Oh God. The, oh, we the, did have dude. The Organifi gold juice. You yes. do that with like a, either macadamia nut milk or almond milk, or if you can drink dairy, some whole, whole milk, warm that bad boy up, drink it at night. Oh, do you mix anything in it or just yeah, straight is there like, any, like no. cinnamon or like, it any comes per, it com- it's like it? just by itself. And, it's good by itself. Oh yeah. And I always forget, like I sleep so good when I drink it. Cause it's anti-inflammatory. It's got some relaxing herbs and that's the point. The point of it is to drink it at night because yeah. it helps you sleep and relax. It's a healthy, it's a very healthy anti-inflammatory drink, but it tastes so good. Yeah. I do so that good. with water. I'm, I was curious to try it. Like we've actually switched milk. So I go, I'm back to like the glass bottle milk. Like, yeah, look from, at you. yeah. I know. You don't get the raw, do you get raw? You know, they sell I'm raw I'm trying. Milk. Yeah. That's the next, uh, uh, I have to, I think there's this place, New Leaf that sells it. They have it. So yeah. it sprouts. Okay. And it's literally raw. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to start drinking That's that. all we give our kids is raw. Really? That's it. I didn't know that. No, my kids have never had uh, any other, I mean, it's just raw. My daughter still drinks milk and she, it's raw. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, I didn't. I'm know like, that. we drink so much of it now, and like, and the kids are yeah. like, just constantly yeah. consuming. I'm like, we got to get higher quality. But with the, shit. With the gold juice, Doug just reminded me is buy one get one free right now. Yeah, for the I, the gold oh, chocolate, nice. gold chocolate. Yeah, yeah. So that's what really was the other? Is there another flavor? Yeah, there was pump. There was a pumpkin one. Oh, yeah, they did do a, a pumpkin a pumpkin yeah. spice one. I yeah. forgot about. So that. speaking of Christmas, you know what movie I watched with my my four year old because it's a good movie, but also the animation's weird. Is a uh, um, Polar Express. Oh yeah. oh yeah, Max doesn't mm. like that one. I just yeah, kind of scared. He just doesn't like. He says it's boring. Yeah, he said it's boring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro, my son. The is animation so, like, is the stuff a he weird. says right now. That's so sure. cute that he yeah. says it's boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's boring. That's exactly yeah. how he yeah. says it too. No, it's boring. Yeah. No, got, we watched it, and uh, Aurelius was a little scared of the intense moments, so I had to fast forward a couple times. Hmm. Um, but then, you know, he, he liked it. But also when you watch it, the you know, that was when they were trying to do CGI to look like people. I like it. It just wasn't. I like well, it. I think it was, they actually acted, I feel like. Didn't they have like actors? I think so. And then they just like tried to make it um, like animated. It's a great, it's the, a great The Jim story. Carrey Christmas Carol is like that too, where it's really crazy animation uh, where it's like almost per, it's like. Surreal. Like, yeah, yeah. Like you realistic. could tell the animation is, is Jim Carrey. Like yeah. it's like they did a really, I mean, I think that looks cool. Yeah. Uh, but he's, yeah, he was like, it's boring. <laughs> it's it's boring. So, he had, he had a, uh, Katrina got, uh, picked him up from school and the teacher was saying like, oh my God, he did so. So they, they do this thing where the, uh, every kid gets, I think a week with this like stuffed animal and, uh-huh. and it's like the, the, the pet. Never had a yeah. teacher like that. Yeah. And then they, and they have to like document all the yeah. stuff they do with it. Take Here's pictures. Jimmy's, uh, germs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I know. Thanks right. right? How did everybody get life? Gift. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. The and then at the end of the week, they, they have to present to their class. So then at the end of the week, they present to the class all like they, it, it's a binder and like you know, activities and things. Yeah. Yeah. Katrina, we yeah. have to take pictures of uh-huh. him doing things with this owl. And then at the end of the, the week, like he's got a, and yeah. you know, he helps me write what, out what they did, how they play together, what they did this, all sort of that. And then uh, when they come back to pass it on the next kid, they have to stand up in front of the class and they have to present what you know what they That's did cute. yeah yeah no yeah. it's it's a really cool but i guess the teacher was telling katrina when she picked it up like oh my god he absolutely crushed it he did all this like that and that this was remember this was part of the staying back right was to, to build his confidence yeah, right yeah. and so she was saying that and so katrina was all excited she's like she's like hey so i heard you uh talked about whatever snacky snacky and at, 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 uh, at, at school today and some of that and he goes yeah yeah she goes so tell me what did you tell the class i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm bored. Yeah, yeah. 
over it. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> boring, mom. Yeah, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. You don't remember? No, I don't remember. Like, oh god, uh, come dude. on, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's dude. hilarious, dude. He's too much. Did you guys right. speaking of like the lice? Did you ever get lice when you were kids? Is that, is that yeah, dude? One time, you did. Yeah, so yeah, did I. Yeah, yeah. Did I you get it? No, I didn't. You didn't get lice. That's when I got into shaving my head after that. I was like, I don't want to. You got it as a teenager. Um, well, no, like it in elementary school. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But that I still a, did a shaved head, like buzz cut. I, I thought everybody had that. got lice when they were kids. No, I didn't. I'm get surprised it. you guys had a, you guys were like on a farm at one point. Yeah. Maybe that's what kept me from getting lice. We had some out. dirty maybe kids. Just always had yeah, it, maybe they always were living in there. Like Linus or whatever. Dude, it's, it's terrible. terrible. Yeah, yeah. I was, so I, I'm the oldest of four. It's and so, itch. you know, when one kid gets it, everybody gets it. And I just yeah, remember my everybody mom. Everybody gets it. Just lost her mind yes. with all of us. And yeah, I think, us in the I tub. Think and one of my the, youngest siblings, I think yeah, we'd like Sarah, Larry, did no one else, nobody else. Something. Cassie and I, I don't think. At least I don't remember if she got it. I didn't get it. So, which is weird, right? Because it is like it's like chicken pox. Like every kid gets it yeah. eventually, or whatever. Chicken pox parties. You yeah, know what? Yeah. I went to one of those, dude. You That's went to a chicken pox party? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're like, oh, so and so has it. Oh yeah. Hey, we're gonna go over to uh, your friend's house. That's how we vaccinated back in the day. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And true. you know, when we were real little, this is kind of even more weird and creepy. But like, they used to do like, we all take a bath together. Yeah, yeah. Like that was like a thing. And I'm like, like I thanks. I don't want to see these like pictures. Like, you, anyways. Well, you were little. You were little. It was really little. Yeah. That's it's fun. not like you're it's like 15. Creepy. creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> but it was always with like a girl that like when I came back from college, like my parents were on this quest to try and like, you know, uh, get me to date whoever so-and-so's one of their friends' daughters. So they pull up a picture. So they pull a picture. <laughs> it was like, this isn't helping, dude. This is awkward. That's hilarious. Yeah. I took a shower with my two little ones the other day and uh, you know, so my son's four, my daughter's two. And they thought it'd be funny to put their butts up against the the glass, you know, door. So they're uh, doing that the whole time. Every kid that's just because yeah. taking pictures. That's a, like, that's oh a, God, that's dude. mandatory. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Mandatory. mooning. That's cute stuff. It's all about mooning. Uh, not to ruin this conversation and get political, but oh. I I do have a, a political question for you. So since you pay attention to this stuff, I, I saw um, obviously everybody's been celebrating all the things and the people that Trump is appointing and stuff like that. But I saw, I believe the the girl that he just appointed is the, and I saw clips of her on on the news. What she's somebody who's pro giving the kids vaccines and getting that all passed. I, I haven't looked too too deep into it. I think mm -hmm. that was I think during one of his biggest criticisms was the whole COVID situation and right, the vaccines right. and stuff like that. Right, because so. I mean he's so proud of the whole warp speed thing yeah. and. But you know, but okay, I don't think. I think this would be the, I don't think at all that they're going to try and push this mandatory because especially with COVID vaccines, I think right now the data shows that only 16% of people now get COVID vaccines. That's oh. how unpopular they are. Oh hmm. yeah. They see commercials like crazy still. I about think they're so unpopular lot. that people are like, nah, is that really? No. If way. I'm not mistaken, I just 16%? saw, I saw something like that. Yeah. Super unpopular. Oh wow. Do you know in the schedule they recommend you give it to your infant? Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, that's why I, the reason why I'm bringing this up yeah. it, it was less to be political, more to be like I, that's just I don't care who's in office. I don't want to see us like mandated for kids to no. to have to have to take no. it, but man, especially maybe, with what we know now. Like what? No, dude. Yeah, but I saw that he appointed that same the same girl that was going around that was saying all that that they were going to to mandate it for the kids. So that was an old clip of her. Yeah, a part of the yeah. I don't know how old it was though. Okay. So, but I that's why I'm asking. I, I did watch that video so i wasn't sure this conversation around vaccines is getting real interesting isn't it it's getting real interesting it, it, it was uh it was like you couldn't touch that rail at all and now a lot of questions are popping up and and it was covid covid yeah. did it, it was even the origin of, of it yeah it was like okay now we can explore the lab leak theory yeah. and we can kind of yeah say what you will about rfk and his opinions towards vaccines he's there's things that he says that are true mm -hmm. like they're like many of them are not tested on people that's it. That's true. If you look it up, that's actually true. Which well, is and it's just and just for them having um, the ability to not be sued and, and to have that kind of insulated shielding yep. from uh, – because the thing is any medicine is, you know, there's going to be people that react negatively. It's yeah. just anything, yep. you know, and to be shielded from that, it's like – now all of a sudden we you just look at the schedule. It was like back in the day it was like seventeen. That's like seventy two, yep. something like that. Like all of a sudden it's because they're insulated. You know, well let's come up with more products. Like it's just from a business perspective. It's like the we can just pump these out. You know, the incentive is crazy. Yeah. You know? So, so anyway, Do we, uh, what's our shout out? It was uh, Max. 
Luger. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. That's right. He was on the on the news. Oh yeah, dude. He's going all over the place. Yeah, talking about I've seen him on a couple and... a couple interviews on the news. Yeah, huh? yeah dude. Yeah. Have you talked yeah, to him since then? Yeah, yeah he's, he's, you know, Max is great. You know, he's he does a really good job presenting health information. He tries. He really values being balanced. He's cautious. He looks at data. He really tries hard to not misrepresent and not get caught up in the. It's easy when you, especially when you're being put at the front uh, of, um, you know, of, of certain things. Like, like he's so well known now. It's easy to get caught up in the in, in the zealotry or the politics of of opinion. And he does a really good job of trying to stay as balanced. And I know Max personally. He's a very good guy. He really tries. Again, he he tries to do a good job with how he presents things. I mean, he's human. But he's got really good integrity. So uh, I know he's been on the show many times. Yeah. You probably know who he is, but he's a great follow. Element is an electrolyte powder you add to your water. No artificial sweeteners, no sugar that replaces electrolytes, especially sodium. It has the right amount of sodium. Most electrolyte powders don't have enough sodium to make a difference, but Element does. So it helps with headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, uh, people who are sleepy and tired, uh, it also helps with pumps. I like it for the pumps in the gym. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get a free sample pack with any drink perch, drink mix purchase by going on that link. All right, back to the show. First question is from Enzor1515. Do complex carbs help muscle soreness before a workout? What foods do you recommend for pre-workout? All right, so there's two questions there. Potentially. The first one is about muscle soreness. So a couple of things we want to consider is that soreness isn't necessarily an indicator that you uh, did a good workout. Less soreness doesn't necessarily mean it's better or worse, although too much soreness typically means you went too hard. Overtrained. But the question is like, okay, how do I, how do I reduce uh, soreness? Now, studies show that there's a few things that seem to reduce the, the perception of soreness um, or maybe even muscle damage that might contribute to soreness. Uh, tart cherry juice is one. Omega-3 fatty acids are another one, I, I think, through the inflammation uh, process. Protein is really the biggest one. Now, here's the interesting thing with carbohydrates. This is now my own anecdote um, and client's anecdote. I noticed, instead of my clients, that when they went on a low-carb, especially keto diet, they were less likely to be sore. And then when they introduced carbohydrates again, the soreness uh, started to come back. I don't know what the why that is. I've I've felt the same thing and always wondered, but I I, I think I attribute it to my my workout intensity is lower when I would be running low. Cost. Exactly what mm -hmm. I was going to say. Like I'm that's, stronger, I can lift more. Maybe that's what's going on when I eat the carbohydrates. That's what I think too. Yeah. I think, but I, I do notice it, right? I notice it too. Yeah. No, 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 I know I noticed that, uh, but I think again, I think it's, I was low calorie, low carb, and so then I didn't I wasn't training as intensely as I mm -hmm. was when I was loaded up on carbs. Uh, cold and hot water contrast is actually pretty good when you're already sore. So it's like 30 second minute cold water to 30 seconds a minute uh, hot water. And that actually, I mean, that actually makes a significant difference in that, that kind of perception of soreness. But, you know, we, we place too much value on soreness as some kind of indicator of a successful workout. I and mean, I used to think that it meant I had a good workout. Um, when in reality, it really, I just especially as I started training clients um, and, and got more experienced, it was a gauge that we might've done too much. But other than that, it really didn't tell me anything um, aside from, again, we overdid it. Is it all like retaining a bit of fluid too for like your joints and uh, in terms of like just having pain as, as opposed to. Yeah. I think too, if you, if you have poor inflammatory, if your in inflammatory system is more towards inflammation like your uh, fatty acid um, profile is isn't great, like more omega sixes than than you should have. Yeah, um, ramp that inflammation. Then you you'll just be sore uh, and achy more often anyway. That's why I said omega, the omega threes and yeah. um, tart cherry juice both have shown that. As far as like what to eat pre workout, I'll tell you what the studies show, and then I'll tell you why. Who cares? The studies show that people perform their best when they have some protein and carbohydrates about an hour. Uh, before they work out, they tend to perform yeah. best. Now, here's why I say, both. who cares? <laughs> I don't like eating. Uh, I like to work out fasted. I've had clients that like to train fast and they feel better. Um, this is always, for me, is, is an individual thing. It's like, do you feel better when you eat before? Then do so. If you feel better when you don't, 
Mm -hmm. then do that as well. doesn't make a big difference. I also think the point that you made about soreness is the, probably the most important point to this question is if you're asking about what foods to eat to reduce soreness, I would actually peer more into my programming than I would worry about the nutritional side right yeah, now. Yeah, good, good point. So if you are if you find yourself really sore and you're like, oh, what foods should I eat? Well, wait a second. Like You shouldn't be that sore. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I always want to feel like I worked out the day before and like know like, oh, okay, I, I worked that muscle. But I don't want to be sore to the touch. I don't want my yeah. movement to be off. Like if, I, if I'm so sore that I have kind of a, a limp, you know, or, or I'm like <laughs> stiff and like, or just like opening up my chest. I'm like, oh, man. I mean, that's, that's just way too sore. You shouldn't, you're over training at that point. That's a, so there's Especially this. It happens more often than not. Like, you know, if you're continuously getting sore. Exactly. Inst instead of just some novel stimulus that you, uh, you know, introduced. Good that's point. a problem. 100%. Yeah. Like changing your workout, uh, will often induce some soreness the first week or so. I mean, for me and for my clients, the best results I ever had and my clients ever had, they typically would rarely feel soreness. Mm -hmm. yep. It was like a little bit at most. That's when you know you're like just hitting it right. That's right. Next question is from Kevin OG. Will circuit training group classes still be beneficial and muscle building if a person isn't super fit and they still get sore from it? So the soreness part, let's get that out. We already kind of addressed <laughs> yeah. that. But if, you, if you're super sedentary and out of shape, Almost any activity will induce a little bit of muscle growth, right? So somebody who sits down all day long, does nothing, they could go for walks and they'll get a little yeah. bit of muscle growth from the walks. But the effect is so limited and so small that you'll get some effect and then it stops, right? So like yoga, Pilates, circuit training, will it build muscle and strengthen somebody who's totally deconditioned? Yeah, but then it stops very quickly because it's not a good... It is not a muscle building form of exercise. It, it isn't sending a a signal uh, that says get stronger beyond a certain point. And that point is very, very, you know, circuit training is endurance. It's lots of stamina, lots of endurance. Now, if you're not strong enough to do the circuit training, you'll get some strength. But then after that, it's all about stamina and endurance and you're not going to benefit. And so uh, uh, really the, the muscle building effect, if you're looking for that, um, and you probably should, because uh, that's where you get all the, the longevity and health benefits and the metabolism boosting effects, is going to be strength training. And whatever mm -hmm. muscle building effect you do get from circuit training, you get a faster, more effective muscle building effect from a far less intense form of exercise uh, that resembled more, you know, more like strength and like traditional strength training. This is the unfortunate bias of being a novice lifter is almost any new stimulus is going to send you in the positive or right direction, even if it's uh, subpar or not ideal. Uh, this is why I think a lot of people get trapped in a modality, right? Like yeah. they were a couch potato. They were eating like crap. They weren't doing any exercise. They showed up to their orange theory class and all of a sudden they feel way better in four weeks than what they felt previously. And it's like, that's not a sign of a good workout program. It's a sign of you were inactive, yeah. making a lot of poor food choices, a lot of poor movement choices. Now you're moving and now you're probably eating better. Now all of a sudden you, but it's not that program or that, uh, that exercise routine that's really good for you. And I think this happens to a lot of people and, the, and it's hard to convince that person uh, that did whatever said modality, not to just pick on Orange Theory. It could be a lot of, a whole bunch of different things. That, I mean, how many beach body people are out there training mm -hmm. beach body programs? Those are terrible. And so that's what happens is the, they see some sort of results and they think it's uh, it's ideal or good for them, but then they quickly hit a plateau and then getting them beyond that is what's really difficult. Yeah, it would be like, um, you know, you're going to gain some endurance uh, from strength training too, but strength training is an endurance form of exercise. Mm -hmm. um, you'll gain some flexibility from, uh, from walking if you never walk, but you're not going to gain much, right? So if you want muscle building, like pick the right tool for the job. And that's just traditional strength training. It's not circuit training. It's Cyber Monday. The Cyber Monday sale is happening right now. All MAPS workout programs and all MAPS workout program bundles are 60% off. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Cyber Monday for that discount. All right, back to the show. Next question is from Steffers in Progress. Will you be sharing more about the outcomes for the GLP-1 group you've been coaching? I would love to hear more about how it went. Well, it'll help if you ask specific questions. Yeah. Um, in general, uh, it was a great experience for us. I think we saw a whole range of 
different body types, ages, sex, like I think uh, different weights, right? People that were way, way overweight. Some people were just mildly overweight. Um, so I think it was an, an incredible learning experience for us. I, I think I, I said this last time that GLP-1 was brought up. I think the one common theme that I noticed amongst all of them <clears throat> was that at some point in time, uh, the inevitable would happen and they would need to reverse diet. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think that was the common, common theme. The common theme was whether you lost 50 pounds, even though we had some people lost over a hundred pounds. We had some people that lost only eight pounds, like all these, all these different people. But the common theme amongst all of them is they all eventually hit this plateau where they're really, really low calorie and the body is just not responding to any more holding. Yeah. It's holding still. And the inevitable is they have to reverse diet out. The, one of the most, the, the, the biggest truth with the group, the GLP-1 group, is the same truth uh, with any group that's trying to improve their health or fitness. And that is that the, it, you, it, it won't do the work for you. You, have, there's still, you still have to do the work. Mm -hmm. So although the GLP-1 um, brought down the appetite and cravings for these people, if they didn't incorporate strength training, if they didn't try to target protein, if they didn't uh, reverse diet when appropriate, the results were limited, um, and, and and or the results were not what they wanted. You know, oh, I lost thirty pounds. Oops, twelve pounds of it was muscle, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the reverse diet part, you know, that I, we anticipated, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize it would be so necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's because like, you drop your calories substantially, um, especially if you don't combine it with strength training. And especially if you don't come from a place where your metabolism is already fast, you're going to hit a hard plateau because your body will adapt to what you're consuming, what you're taking in, however low it is, and then you have nowhere to go. In other words, if you're obese and you're currently eating on average, I don't know, 2,000 calories a day and you need to lose 80 pounds, and then you go on a GLP-1 and it crushes your appetite, so now you're eating 900 calories, you know, you're going to lose 40 pounds. Uh, some of it's going to be muscle. A lot of it will be muscle if you don't strength train. If you strength train and eat high protein, you'll, you'll offset that. But let's say you don't, you just take it. Now you're eating 900 calories. You lost 40 pounds. Guess what's going to happen? Your body's going to stop losing weight. And then you're stuck. Yeah. Now I'm eating 900 calories. Do I eat less? Do I increase my dosage and eat less? No, of course not. Because now you're, you're not eating essential nutrients and you're going to cause yourself some problems. So, and that perspective then you have to reverse diet build muscle speed up your metabolism so we can start the fat loss process over again so for me uh doing this it really confirmed what we knew which is uh, a lot of people think this is going to be a magic bullet solution oh, a lot when, of work is necessary with it it's just a, it's a tool like any yeah. other tool but you still have to do the work you still have to address certain things otherwise you're going to hit a real strong plateau and then be in, in a really terrible place where you're stuck with this low caloric intake, slow metabolism, and I still have 20, 30 pounds to lose. You know, type I mean, the real benefit from what we already even anticipated was that it just helps to break you free of some of these like patterns that you just, you get stuck in. Like it's, 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 you know, that, uh, it's less ideal for me to constantly crave these foods and, uh, to, to be above, you know, a certain calorie amount. And it's just, it, it's helpful in that regard with, you know, allowing you to not have those strong sensations towards that. I, I would say that was probably the, 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 nothing was surprising. I don't think there was anything that one of no. us were like surprised at all. So there was definitely nothing surprising, but one of the things that was it most interesting to me was the amount of people that had a story of how it like, Man, I have not. I don't crave that thing ever anymore. I'm not thinking about. Food I don't all think day. about it all the time. Psh, yeah, on. I mean, to see that many clients say something like that, where uh, something that they know they battled with, uh, you know, snacking, uh, addictive uh, behaviors around cigarettes, drinking. I mean, you name it, we had it in that group, and it seemed to like across the board, everybody go like. I just don't even care. It's like it's, it's like taking the volume on that that loud noise and turning it way down. That's mm -hmm. what a lot of them would say. Yes, and then it puts them in a position to where now they can develop new behaviors and relationships to these things. Um, that, yeah. that was for me. It's like that confirmed that. Like, okay, if, if you use this to get you to a different place, that then you can maintain on your own, and you do the work uh, necessary. It, it could be a very valuable tool. 
if you don't, yeah. it'll it'll just be something you take for the rest of your life. I, I think if you were to ask them, I mean, we were really uh, pleased with the response. In fact, our very last call was very humbling. Um, everybody kind of went around and just thanked us for the the time and the opportunity to be a part of that group. I think that if they didn't know before, they definitely realized in that the importance of the um, you know guidance slash counseling. Uh, it, it paired with also a medical professional who's m manipulating the dose based off with it. I think that becomes paramount to the success of somebody who takes the GLP one is one working with a physician who is in a position or able to recommend the do different dosages and not just some generic here, go take this. Mm -hmm. And then also paired with either a therapist or a very well-versed trainer or coach who can communicate the behavioral aspect and the psychological side to the client. I think those things pair together really uh, set these people up um, for a lot of success. I felt that from, from that totally. group, but I think that's going to be necessary for these people that if you think you're going to hop on a GLP one and it's just going to magically gonna take things for you. Yeah. Take happen. you there and it's going to be easy cruising and then you're going to get off of it. You're going to be in this, this perfect weight you always wanted. I, I think there's a lot more to it than just that. Next question is from Lori Madel. Any plans to make some sort of online registry for coaches so that listeners can find coaches in their area that listen to Mind Pump? You we know, have that in the forum. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about this for a second because um, we've been on air now for, for 10 years and um, our origin was as trainers. Like we trained people, we worked with people for years and years and years, decades, and we didn't touch trainers and coaches in terms of services or courses or anything for a long time precisely because these were uh, like this is one of the most important groups of people to us and we if we ever approach this we want to do a really good job and we know how valuable they are we know the impact they have on people and so it took us a long time and stage one was introducing a course for coaches and trainers that teaches coaches and trainers how to be effective how to truly be effective now it, it's not a certification uh, like other certifications, you're not going to learn biomechanics. You're not going to lear <clears throat> learn, you know, the the X's and O's because you're already doing that through your other certs. This was like, how do you build your business and how do you be effective? How can you be effective with your clients? How can you build a career around coaching and training? And how can we create uh, kind of this 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 narrative where you know the best trainers um, rise to the top? Um, and that's where we started, but that's not where we're stopping. Uh, the idea is to place a lot of focus on this. This is the upcoming year, is we're going to place a lot of focus on working with and developing trainers and coaches uh, because up until now, there really isn't, um, a, a, there, there isn't a criteria, an organization. You know, you can say you're a trainer and people can ask you a bunch of questions, but there's no like, are you a trainer for this? Or do you have this course? And then people just know like, oh, they're going to be good. Um, and that's what we want. We want to, um, what this person is asking, we want to provide that. We want to create uh, a way for people to know that they're going to work with a trainer and they're going to be good, that they're going to have the same understandings and beliefs and philosophies around fitness and nutrition that we promote on the podcast, that they'll do things the right way, and that this person is concerned with getting them long-term sustainable success, not short-term, not fads, but like this person understand what really works and what works long-term. So that's the goal. So online registry wise, we have a forum for trainers. Um, we are just started and, and this is really in, in its infancy. We just started having trainers uh, do online coaching under the mind pump, umbe mind pump umbrella, but it's going to grow. It's a big focus for us. Yeah. So a couple of things. One, in the Mind Pump private forum, uh, Helen has uh, comprised a list of all the trainers. A spreadsheet. That, yeah, a spreadsheet that has from all the different states and, and where they're all at. And then to Sal's point, we're obviously trying to cultivate that in-house too, right? So, which also is explains the philosophy behind why we have an open and closed enrollment. Uh, you know, the idea is to not just be constantly be selling these courses, but to bring on a handful of trainers at a time, bring them in into the culture, help develop them, make sure that they're doing a good job. Then when we feel confident in that group, we open up enrollment again, bring more trainers in. And so the idea is that we're not just you know, sending this course out and then leaving these trainers be, but that we kind of hold their hand through this process to help scale them up to be not only successful trainers, but really good trainers that service people and that uh, that we're proud of to carry the the mind pump name, and so that's a big focus. This 
it's been this year and coming next year will be a lot of where we put a lot of our attention. So, and if you're not already following uh, Mind Pump Kyle, Kyle is, uh, you know, heads up all that department. So if you want information regarding the trainers and stuff like that, that's the person to talk to. By the way, we do uh, webinars um, every other month free for trainers and coaches where we teach them. We coach them how to be more successful. They're totally free. This is as a way to give back uh, to our community. The next one is January 7th. So if you're a trainer and you want to learn from us, uh, and again, it's private, you can sign up at trainerwebinar.com. January 7th is the next one. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body